And for the headlines, weather forecast, tropical depression and 10 years northern Samar. Winds reach 55 km per hour as southwest monsoon affects southern Luzon, Visayas and Mindanao. Local news, man takes his own life after hostage crisis. Interfaith groups oppose the privatization of COWD. DSWD-10 is prepared to distribute financial aid. The fire at New Nong Nonga National High School in Don Carlos Bukidnon cost 2 million pesos in damage to computers. National News The Bureau of Immigration has blacklisted and banned three Malaysians for falsely claiming to be KOJC members. International News Taiwan urges China to stop threats, criticizes reckless ambitions. Entertainment Tickets for Day 3 of Grand Biniverse sell out in under 2 hours. Sports Charlie Suarez aims for world title. International Feature UNICEF issues emergency tenders for MPOX vaccines. National Feature Approximately 20,000 participants joined CSC Fun Run in Manila. Trivia Revealing the Innovator, the story behind the creation of TikTok and its founder. If you find this segment informative, please click the thumbs up button and subscribe to stay updated with our latest news and share this broadcast to your friends and family. Your support helps us keep you informed. Help us get our first 10,000 subscribers. Your engagement matters. Liking, sharing, and subscribing to our content not only helps more people discover the important stories we bring you, but also supports our team's hard work. It boosts our visibility in the algorithm, making it easier for others to find ways to stay informed. Plus, it helps us generate more resources to continue delivering the news you rely on. Thank you for being part of our community. Good morning, Philippines. Magano maga Luzon, ng mayo adlo Visayas ng Mindanao. Today is Thursday, September 5, 2024. I am Athalia Pisaniel. Weather forecast, tropical depression and 10 years northern Samar, winds reach 55 km per hour as southwest monsoon affects southern Luzon, Visayas and Mindanao. As of the latest available data, the center of tropical depression and 10 has been pinpointed approximately 110 km northeast of Katarman, northern Samar or about 155 km east of Kuban, Sorsogon. The system is currently packing maximum sustained winds of 55 km per hour near its center, with gusts reaching up to 70 km per hour. Anting is moving in northeastward direction at a speed of 15 km per hour, posing a potential threat to nearby regions. The tropical depression is also de intensifying the southwest monsoon, which is bringing rains to the western sections of southern Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. Residents in these areas are advised to stay alert for possible flooding, landslides, and other weather-related hazards. Local authorities and disaster rep response teams are on high alert as the system progresses and the public is encouraged to stay updated on the latest weather bulletins and advisories from the Philippine Atmospheric, Geophysical and Astronomical Services Administration.
Local news. Man takes his own life after hostage crisis. In Cagayan de Oro City, a 37-year-old man, Ramonito Tumulak, died by suicide after a heated argument with his wife, driven by intense jealousy. The incident occurred in Mailag, Valencia City, Bukidnon. The situation escalated when Tumulak took his 7-year-old son hostage while quarreling with his wife, Ivy Lu, a teacher at Valencia City National High School. The conflict seemed to have been diffused by a local barangay official, and the child was safely rescued. However, shortly after the situation was resolved, Ivy Lu re-entered the house where she was tragically shot in the head by her husband. Upon realizing what he had done, Tumulak turned the gun on himself and shot himself in the head. Tumulak was declared dead upon arrival at the hospital, while his wife is in critical condition and receiving treatment at the Northern Mindanao Medical Center. The Valencia PNP continues to investigate the underlying motives behind the tragic event. Interfaith groups oppose the privatization of COWD. Various churches within the interfaith group have united to strongly oppose the potential privatization of the Cagayan de Oro Water District. They fear that privatization could result in higher costs, reduced access, and a disregard for the welfare of the city's most vulnerable residents. In an ecumenical pastoral statement, the group expressed concerns about the ongoing water crisis and the risks of privatization. Father Jefferson Palasan, chairman of the Iglesia Filipina Independiente Social Advocate, emphasized that water is a fundamental human right and should not be commodified for profit. The group warned that privatization could lead to inequitable access environmental harm, and a lack of public accountability. They called for an inclusive dialogue with the government, civil society, and public to explore alternatives such as improving public management and infrastructure. The interfaith group remains committed to opposing privatization and ensuring that water remains a public trust for the benefit of all residents. DSWD-10 is prepared to distribute financial aid. The Department of Social Welfare and Development, 10, is actively working to bolster the case against two syndicates implicated in the fraudulent collection of cash assistance from their office, involving several city residents in their scheme. This development follows the recent arrest of Mel Melchor Rosalo from Barangay Canituan, who was found to be engaged in a fraudulent operation using the office of Congressman Rufus Rodriguez to deceive beneficiaries. Rochelle Galia, spokesperson of DSWD-10, expressed their astonishment at the discovery and emphasized the severity of the situation. According to Galia, the department had been alerted by a troubling pattern of financial claims submitted by 14 clients associated with Rodriguez's office. This prompted DSWD-10 to undertake a thorough investigation, which revealed that, that only three of these referrals were legitimate. The fire at Nongnonga National High School in Don Carlos, Bukidnon, caused 2 million pesos in damage to computers. The structural damage from the fire at the computer building of New Nongnonga National High School in Don Carlos, Bukidnon, is estimated to be around 2 million pesos. According to Don Carlos Fire Station Arson Investigator SFO3, Fausto Obedencio, their initial investigation suggests that an electrical short circuit may have caused the fire, which broke out at around 11 a.m. The fire was raised to first alarm status, indicating the severity of the situation in the concrete structure. Teachers at the site noted that the only device plugged into the electrical outlet inside the building was the internet connection, which may have been a factor. A vigilant student was the first to notice the smoke, quickly alerting others to danger. SFO3 Obedensha emphasized that the investigation is still ongoing, with further details to be clarified. 
However, initial findings point toward an electrical issues as the likely cause. The first station received the emergency call at 11.13 a.m. and reports suggest that the fire began at approximately 11.05 a.m. The building, while made of concrete, is notably old, which may have contributed to the extent of the damage. Initial estimates place the financial loss at around 1 million 920,000 pesos, but the final figure could change at, as the investigation continues and more information becomes available. National News. The Bureau of Immigration has blacklisted and banned three Malaysians for falsely claiming to be KOJC members. The Bureau of Immigration has blacklisted and banned three Malaysians who falsely claimed to be members of Pastor Apollo Kibuloy's Kingdom of Jesus Christ from entering the Philippines. This action is part of the BI's efforts to protect the country's borders from fraudulent entries. The incident occurred on August 27 when Jessica Lynn Henry, Mimiliana Ani Anak Lisoy, and Adri Josebul Anak Gara arrived at Naiya from Kuala Lumpur. 
the trio accompanied by Filipinos who also claim KOJC affiliation raise suspicions during the routine immigration checks. When further inspection was initiated, the Filipinos abandoned the Malaysians. BI Commissioner Norman Tansinko stated that discrepancies in their claims led to their immediate denial of entry and subsequent deportation on August 28. The BI stressed the importance of maintaining national security and warned against the exploitation of religious affiliations to bypass immigration protocols. The incident highlights the BI's commitment to thorough verification process and its call for religious groups to be vigilant against individuals who may misuse their association. International News Taiwan urges China to stop threats, criticizes reckless ambitions. Taiwan has added its voice to the chorus condemning China's recent aggression towards Philippine vessels, including a new incident where a Chinese Coast Guard ship rammed the BRP Teresa Magbanwa at Escoda Shoal. Taiwan's Ministry of Foreign Affairs issued a statement on Saturday supporting the U.S. condemnation of China's blatant breach of international law, noting that China's actions exacerbate regional instability. The incident involved a China Coast Guard vessel with bow number 5205 repeatedly colliding with the Philippine Coast Guard's BRP Teresa Magbanua while it was stationed at Escoda Shoal, a strategic reef within the Philippines' exclusive economic zone. The Philippine vessel stationed there in since April has faced ongoing harassment from China, including blockades and collisions. Taiwan's MOFA declared that neither the Philippines nor any other nation should be threatened by the CCP's reckless ambitions. Although Taiwan operates independently, its lack of formal diplomatic relations with most countries is due to the One China policy, which views Taiwan as part of China. Entertainment Tickets for Day 3 of Grand Biniverse sell out in under 2 hours. Tickets for the third day of Bini's highly anticipated Grand Biniverse concert at, the, at Araneta Coliseum in November sold out in record time. Star Music announced on Sunday night that all tickets for day three were completely gone in under two hours, showcasing the overwhelming demand from fans. The addition of a third day was prompted by the incredible response to the initial concert dates. The first two days had also experienced rapid sellouts, with tickets disappearing in just three hours. This rapid sellout underscores the immense popularity and dedicated fan base of the nation's girl group. Star Music, which organized the event, expressed heartfelt gratitude to fans for their enthusiastic support. They promised an extraordinary experience, emphasizing their commitment to delivering a show that will exceed expectation. The label also hinted at special surprises and performances planned for the third day, ensuring that fans who secured tickets will have a memorable experience. Ports Charlie Suarez aims for world title. Filipino boxer Charlie Suarez is preparing to face Andres Cortez in a 10-round world boxing organization eliminator match in Arizona on September 20. This fight brings him one step closer to realizing his dream of becoming a world champion. During a press conference on Saturday, Suarez spoke about his long-standing aspiration to achieve professional world champion status, which had been postponed due to an injury sustained after the 2016 Olympics. This has always been my dream. Even when I was on the national team, my goal was to become a professional, Suarez shared. 
The 36-year-old athlete expressed deep gratitude to former Ilocos Sur Governor Chavit Singson for his unwavering support, which has been crucial in providing opportunities for international competition. Governor Singson gave me a chance and truly believed in my potential. He saw that there is still an opportunity for me to achieve my dream of becoming a world champion, Suarez added. He highlighted that Sing Son's assistance extended to providing a training venue in Tagaytay, which has significantly eased their financial burdens. International Feature UNICEF Issues Emergency Tenders for MPOX Vaccines UNICEF announced on Saturday that it has initiated an emergency tender for MPOX vaccines to support countries severely affected by the recent outbreak. The move aims to ensure immediate access to existing vaccines and to boost production's capabilities. According to UNICEF, the emergency tender is a collaborative effort involving the World Health Organization, the Gavi Vaccine Alliance, and Africa CDC. The goal is to address the urgent need for MPOX vaccines and to enhance global response efforts. In addition to securing vaccine supplies, the initiative also the initiative also seeks to strengthen vaccination infrastructure and distribution networks in the hard, hardest hit regions. This comprehensive approach is designed to mitigate the impact of the outbreak and prevent further spread of the disease. UNICEF, along with its partners, is committed to working closely with affected countries to ensure that the vaccines are distributed effectively and reach those in greatest need. The emergency tender represents a critical step in the global effort to control the MPOX outbreak and safeguard public health. National Feature Approximately 20,000 participants joined CSC Fund Run in Manila. On Sunday, approximately 20,000 participants from various government agencies joined a fun run at the Carino Grandstand in Manila, celebrating the 124th Philippine Civil Service Anniversary. The event, named Vibe Run, Takbo Para Sa Mga Servant Heroes, aimed to foster camaraderie, promote physical fitness, and enhance mental well-being among civil servants. Beyond marking the anniversary, the gathering underscored the value of maintaining a healthy lifestyle and the importance of teamwork within the public sector. Yang Mercado, an employee of the Taguig City Government, described the event as a valuable opportunity for relaxation and connection. It's a huge help because it allows us to unwind. We experience different activities and enjoy ourselves. Is excellent for bonding, Mercado noted. The fun run included various activities designed to encourage a healthier lifestyle among civil servants while re reinforcing their sense of community and dedication to service. <music> Trivia Revealing the Innovator the story behind the creation of TikTok and its founder. The origins of TikTok, known as Douyin in China, mark a pivotal moment in the development of social media. Launched by ByteDance under the leadership of Zhang Yiming in September 2016, Douyin quickly garnered popularity within China due to its innovative video sharing format and user-friendly interface. Recognizing the app's potential for global appeal, ByteDance introduced TikTok to the international market in September 2017. TikTok's breakthrough came, na came not only from its advanced algorithm, which meticulously curates personali personalized content for each user, but also from its unique approach to social media. The platforms emphasize on creativity, Self-expression and community building allowed users to produce and share short-form, 
videos could go viral almost instantaneously. Features like music integration, special effects, and interactive challenges created a new genre of content that resonated deeply with younger audiences. The app's rapid growth was fueled by its ability to adapt to different cultures and markets, leading to a global phenomenon that transcended ge geographic boundaries. By mid 2018, TikTok had become one of the most downloaded apps in the world overtaking established social media giants. Its influence began to seep into mainstream culture, driving trends in fashion, music, and even language. As phrases and dances popularized on the platform, spread like wildfire. And that was the information we got from here and abroad. Keep listening and watching. And thank you very much for everyone who's tuning in and for everyone who subscribed our YouTube channel and and for the followers who follows us on Facebook. Thank you very much. If you find this segment informative, please click the thumbs up button and subscribe to stay updated with our latest news and share this broadcast to your friends and family. Your support helps us keep you informed. Help us get our first 10,000 subscribers. Your engagement matters. Liking, sharing, and subscribing to our content not only helps more people discover the important stories we bring you, but also supports our team's hard work. It boosts our visibility in the algorithm, making it easier for others to find ways to stay informed. Plus, it helps us generate more resources to continue delivering the news you rely on. Thank you for being part of our community.